Hi, my name is Jeff Sweet. I'm Deputy Fire Chief for Port Coquitlam Fire Department. We're a small city outside of Vancouver, British Columbia. We have 85 members in our department, two fire halls, and we staff four apparatus with 85 members. We've built a new rescue truck here with SVI to replace our current SVI rescue truck. This one's considerably larger. We've built this new SVI rescue truck to replace our uh, 2005 uh, SVI rescue truck that uh, is uh, quite a bit smaller. We've, we've gone a lot bigger to, uh, to meet the needs of our city. This truck is approximately four feet longer than our older truck with a larger cab as well. We feel this will be what we need to meet the needs for the next 15 or so years. Uh, inside the cab here, we decided to go with a Spartan Metrostar chassis uh, with uh, a longer cab than our current rescue truck. We needed a little more uh, room for the people in there. It's a five-seater. In following with a clean cab initiative, we decided to take the SCBAs out of the cab of the truck. They'll be mounted in the rear. Uh, part of the clean cab initiative is to uh, not transport any contaminated gear to or from uh, incidents. Inside the cab, there's a fair bit of storage that should uh, provide us with a lot more than our current rescue truck. We've decided to go with a lot of rollout trays with vertical tool boards. This will allow us to mount all of our equipment both inside the tray and vertically. Extra large storage up here for basket stretchers. Full depth uh, tool trays with vertical tool boards again here. The tripod storage, rollout trays here. We wanted everything to be very uh, user friendly for the firefighters uh, so that they would have a lot of ro rollout storage. Long cord, electric cord. We've got shore powered plugs inside for uh, anything we want to have on chargers. These are full width uh, rollout trays, so their uh, transverse trays will go out either side of the truck. We thought that would be very useful depending on the staging of the vehicle. A lot of rollout trays here as well, or in these cabinets as well. Uh, the out and down style that come out and, and give you the ability to reach equipment better. Compartments are quite tall, so we wanted to be able to make sure we can reach everything and maximize our storage. This truck is designed to provide everything we would need. We have one rescue truck in our city and this is designed to bring everything we would need to incidents uh, in an initial response. So hazmat equipment, special operations equipment, uh, technical high angle, auto extrication, support at all incidents. Three hydraulic reels. This will be our uh, auto extrication cabinet. We have an electric hydraulic pump mounted up top in one of the rooftop storage boxes. That's all powered by the, the uh, PTO. Uh, we also have a uh, recessed uh, uh, power awning on the uh, on this side of the truck. Uh, it's 18 feet and will extend a full 10 feet out. That will provide us with uh, protection from the sun or the rain and uh, also can help keep your equipment dry. So we are uh, pretty happy to have an awning on our new truck. Our uh, current rescue truck, it's got a vertical ladder off to one side. Uh, not very uh, easy for us to access equipment. So with this new truck, we've opted for the rear staircase. It has more than double the, the, uh, the storage up top uh, than our current truck. Our plan with this truck uh, is to store a, a lot of the lighter gear, hazmat gear, uh, confined space, some of our more uh, low frequency events that we won't need the equipment very often, but uh, we will be able to bring it all on this truck. We currently can't fit it all on our rescue truck. This will allow us to bring everything we need to the initial response. We've uh, mounted a command light, uh, the LED command light, on the roof of the cab. We've really maximized storage up top here. These rooftop coffin boxes are a lot deeper on this truck. We've gone with the uh, tall body on the truck. So there's a lot of storage here for us. This is where our hydraulic pump will go for heavy hydraulics. And we've also used a lot of uh, baffling to divide the compartments. So we'll be, uh, they're fully adjustable. This will help separate equipment. This compartment here uh, with adjustable shelving uh, so we'd be able to put some taller equipment in here, uh, some of our gas powered fans, and also wanted to uh, have a fair amount of, uh, of cylinder storage for uh, SCBA cylinders.
airbag storage here, out and down tray. We're pretty happy to have uh, put these, these trays in. Back side of our transverse trays, we'll be uh, mounting our breathing apparatus on here. We have a lot of uh, Paratech rescue equipment, specifically uh, putting our most, our heaviest equipment down low uh, with these Rolo trays. We have a 9,000 pound winch here that uh, can hook onto any of the four anchor points, one on each side, one on the front and one on the back. That winch is uh, very versatile on this truck to be able to uh, secure to vehicles and things like that. This cabinet is for our EMS gear. We're not keeping any EMS gear inside the cab. Again, with the Clean Cab Initiative, trying to reduce contamination. The beauty of uh, keeping it out of your cab is you don't have to do as much decontamination of your cab if you keep all the uh, contaminated gear in the body of the truck rather than inside the cab. So we have adjustable shelving here again. We have a fridge on our current rescue truck, so we opted for one again. We like to keep it full of cold water for firefighter rehab at scenes. Basket stretchers are transverse as well, so we have access on either side. This is our first trip down here to see the finished truck. Uh, it should be up in Canada in the next week or so. We can't wait to get our hands on it and start uh, outfitting it with equipment. It's replacing a 17-year-old SVI rescue truck, so there's a lot of new, uh, lot of new bells and whistles on this new truck.